I would just like to share some hard facts and figures about the evolution of African stock exchanges so as to get a good perspective of what the story has been in terms of capital raising. In fact, if we look at uh, the evolution of the exchange space within Africa over the last 12 years, we'll see that we've moved from 12 exchanges covering different countries in the continent to 23 exchanges right now. And there are 2,000 companies listed on those exchanges. And the performances of many of these exchanges have been extremely good, as you highlighted, Basil. If you look at the 2002 to 2008 period, most of the exchanges have grown at an annualized rate in US dollar terms, varying between 15% to plus 40%, which has made Africa figure among the best performing exchanges in the world during that time frame. Following the international crisis in 2008, of course, uh, African exchanges have been affected as the other exchanges in the world, but to a lesser degree because of the uncorrelated nature of the evolution of African exchanges with the rest of the world, which makes Africa an interesting diversification asset for investors looking at you know, attracting good returns and achieving positive alpha on their investment. So coming to the specifics of your question concerning what has the story been with regard to capital raising, I would try to give you some figures over the 2007-2009 uh, period, which are the last two years. There's been 10 billion US dollars raised on 18 exchanges in Africa through 170 initial public offerings, which is quite good and which underscores what has been said so far that Africa's time has come. There are some fundamental changes going on the economic front in many African countries, and this is being translated in the way the African capital markets are evolving. There are still, of course, a lot to do. It's true that uh, there are another 2,000 companies maybe that could be listed that, are sti that still lie outside the domain of, of the exchanges. So the key question is, how do we go about attracting most of these companies to come and list and open up their capital? I think there are three or four initiatives that need to be pursued. First, we need people uh, who have gone through the experience to be the main spokesman to the other companies that are not listed and explain to them what the value creation experience has been for their companies during the period that they've been listed. In fact, in Mauritius, we, we undertook uh, an exercise uh, three weeks ago where we tried to figure out what has the value creation been for listed companies on the exchange since their date of listing to the beginning of September this year. And the figures are mind-boggling. In fact, we find that the top 30 companies have yielded total returns from 1,700% to an astounding 11,800% 11, uh, 11, since they've been listed on the exchange. So I'm sure that there are other exchanges where the experience has been as good or even better than Mauritius if we look at the, what it has been over the last 10 years. And therefore, I think to attract more companies to come and raise capital, we need to have you know, some, some, some companies, spokesmen, to come and share their experience and try to convince the others. Another initiative which I think uh, needs to be pursued is to reduce the regulatory gap between listed companies and unlisted companies with a, lar a relatively large number of shareholders. In fact, using the experience of Mauritius, the FSC, our regulator, came with the Securities Act in 2005 where they introduced the concept of reporting issuer. Basically, this is a concept where you may be an unlisted company, but if you have 100 shareholders, you need to come up with compliance, disclosure requirements, which are not very far from a listed company. So by doing that, basically what this means is those companies that are private and that are worried that going to an exchange 
would increase the cost of compliance and so on, would figure out that you know, the difference between being an unlisted and an, a listed company is not that big. So I think this is something that needs to be looked at at the level of other jurisdictions so that we manage to uh, you know, attract more listings. Thirdly, I think governments have to show the way also by bringing on some of the good, well-managed government control companies through IPOs so that they can, in so doing, contribute to the democratization of the economy and allow you know, more and more people to uh, share in the growth story of these companies and be owners of these companies and, and really benefit from what is going to happen in, in Africa. And to end my short intervention, I would just mention a few IPOs that have been very successful in, in Africa and which in terms of capital raising have reached international standards. There's been Safaricom, which al almost raised one billion US dollar in Kenya about three, four years ago, and which attracted no less than 200,000 retail investors from Kenya. I think this is an excellent way of trying, you know, to reach out to the population and ensure that these people participate in the growth story of some of the largest companies in Africa. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor.